Hello, my little deviants. It's time to pop a squad by the campfire, relax, and chit-chat under the beautiful night sky above us. Have I painted a picture of a campfire sit-down? Because that's the intent of it. Ready or not, here we go, folks. Blank Dream is an RPG horror game first released on August 24th, 2015 by a... Kanawo Teriyaki Tomato. Yeah, I think that that parentheses is more of a screen name or something. Anyway, this game was made on the RPG Maker VX Ace Engine, one that I'm actually incredibly familiar with and fuck around with in my spare time. This being an RPG Maker game means that we get to see and expect a lot of the same general concepts used in other RPG horror games out there, which includes things like puzzles, traps, gruesome scenery, a good plot, and a main character with a backstory that gets revealed as the game further progresses. All the typical aspects of an RPG horror game are here in this game, as well as its own little twist that I find rather unique in style. Blank Dream begins in a place called the Mirror World, and makes pretty good use of the whole amnesia cliché. Turns out you killed yourself for unknown reasons, lost your memories in death, and while doing so, you made a wish that you had never even existed in the first place. The only way to regain your lost memories and grant your wish is to shatter all the mirrors in the Mirror World by killing yourself inside of them. I just want to expound on the fact of how uneasy this made me feel playing this game. I'm pretty sure this was the game designer's intent, but nonetheless. If you couldn't tell by now, this game puts some heavy emphasis on suicidal themes as both a plot device and in the gameplay. And you'll be continually reminded of this, considering that there are a total of six goddamn mirrors in this game. Each that are placed in its own sectioned off areas slash zones with different themes in each area. Certain doors in this game will be locked by corresponding keys that match the color, bronze, silver, and gold. It adds a layer of progression to everything, and you know that you need to complete the bronze rooms in order to access the silver key, and then move on to the next portion of the game. A basic design, but it's effective nonetheless because of its fluid and straightforward design. Each of these stages has its own set of puzzles, traps, items, and goals to accomplish within all of them. All in all, none of them were really too obscure. In fact, I managed to make it through this entire first play of the game without even touching the walkthrough. And the puzzles were actually fairly solid. Usually horror games tend to spoon-feed you puzzle solutions by a note of some sort somewhere else in the game. While Blank Dream also uses the whole, like, witch's house style, read the plaque to know the puzzle thing, they managed to keep a delicate balance between the simple and obscure, and I had fun with them, genuinely. I almost totally forgot about the true meat of Blank Dream that gets established right after you complete the first stage of the game. Turns out that there are two other characters in the Mirror World who have also lost their memories. And yep, you guessed it, you need to help and find all of their mirrors as well. The thing to remember here is that while it's not necessary to find their mirrors to beat the game, it's a necessary evil in order to view the best endings. I needed a walkthrough to find these, I'm not gonna lie. They were pretty fucking obscure, and they required you to complete every stage so that you can adjust the lantern light in order to find even most of them. But I'll get into that one later on. My first and biggest pro for this game is the implementation of an actual fucking objective. I touched on this in Pitch Black and praised the great and mighty Louis Ferru Dev about creating an objective with all the torches and everything. Same concept here. The thing is that too many RPG horror games and Horror games in general have really boring objectives. Eve, you need to get out of the art gallery. Mad father, find father. Crooked man, find the previous tenant of my apartment. Seriously, what are you going to do? Have a fucking tea party with him, David? I mean, it's just not that these games are necessarily bad, but the way that the plot moves forward to the actual horror just tends to lack. I mean, how many times have you watched a horror game character make a terrible fucking decision and then asked, Gee, who the hell would do that? Must be a moron. Before coming to the conclusion, Oh, right, I'm playing a horror game. And if they didn't do that, then it wouldn't advance the plot. Blank Dream, on the other hand, delivers. The best thing about the objective is that it is literally understood as a gameplay mechanic towards the player. You've already done this in countless other video games, like the eight red coins from Super Mario 64. Find the mirrors, break them, complete game. Got it. Second major pro, the music. The music. The music. Any of you who return to watch my content should probably already know that a good soundtrack make or breaks a game for me. I need a good soundtrack. I fucking need it. And this game has that soundtrack. 
That hub music that it plays the first time that you meet Yuzu was definitely something I was not expecting out of an RPG horror game. And it's fantastic. There are other good tracks as well, typically ones associated to plot reveals and of course the track from Eve that plays in the school area. My third and final pro that I wanted to address is about the game's plot. For those of you who don't want any spoilers, just stop right here because I'm about to dump into a very big payout towards the end of the game. Blank Dream had an interesting focus on its storyline, meaning that the game focuses more on the characters as a whole. This game is less centered around the main character, Mashiro, and instead makes you draw the lines of the relationships between the characters mentioned throughout the game to understand what truly happened to drive the main character to suicide. Characters weren't introduced in Blank Dream just to make you get attached to them before they were inevitably killed off like most horror games. Instead, characters were introduced because they all had some major contribution to the story at some point. And the game feels more like a spider web of events, trying to tie them together. While this was a bit confusing, I also found it interesting nonetheless. This point will be expanded on in just a minute here. Going along with the plot being interesting, there's also a con about it that I wasn't a big fan of. That con is plot dump. While those are a necessity sometimes, I feel like a plot dump more often than not is used as a lazy way to drop all of the game's story into one short session. Usually because there wasn't enough information throughout the game itself. Blank Dream doesn't divulge a whole lot of information about the plot behind the Mirror World, or other characters that this game is more centered around, like what about Mashiro's grandfather Rinzo, Utsuro, or Tamaki? These people are more often what the game is far more centered on than even Mashiro herself, and there's hardly anything even divulged. Instead, after receiving all of either Yuzu or Ryotaro's mirrors, Tamaki, which is your best friend Ayato's mother, or Rinzo, your grandpappy, dump a bunch of names, relationships, and overall just way too much fucking text for one sit down. At least for me, it was really difficult to follow. The second con is less major, which involves the lantern light. A few mirrors of the side characters require the ability to make your lantern brighter. This is something that's only obtained after the end of one of the final areas of the game. While I don't particularly have an issue with that part by itself, the problem is that the game didn't really seem to do a great job at telling me that it was useful for every other fireplace in the game. Now I know what you're thinking, it's kind of self-explanatory, and you should be able to figure that one out just for crawling down a fireplace anyway, and I'll take full responsibility for that. But I feel that there should have been a tool tip or a quick piece of dialogue telling me to backtrack now that I have the lantern upgrade. If not that, then why not change the dialogue on all the other fireplaces and hint on that you needed more light or something? All the other fireplaces just give you the same boring generic text that insinuates that they don't do anything special. Therefore, it was really easy to just forget about them entirely. Third and final con is that goddamn shadow dude that chases you throughout the game. I dealt with it and I'm aware of the limitations of the RPG Maker engine, but even knowing and performing different events with the editor, I have no fucking idea how this guy even works. Nothing seems overly consistent. I get the gist of it, which is to hide from the shadow, behind objects, and not make any noise by stepping on glass, etc. And this worked in 90% of the times that I did bump into him. But those goddamn hallways, where the shadow could just show up randomly? I eventually hit a point where I literally just kept leaving the area and then returning until it disappeared because it was too goddamn difficult to do it legitimately. Make no mistake, after the cons I just mentioned, Blank Dream was an outstanding and unique little title that I was very grateful to spend the time playing instead of just watching Markiplier play it. The shadow seemed like it was a little bit nitpicky more than anything else, or that it was my aggravation to do the talking. All in all, Blank Dream was an incredible experience, and the good far outweighs the bad. If I could add anything to this game, it'd be some form of bonus content. The thing that gave Pitch Black so much charm was all the references and collectible artwork in the game. Misao and Eve had some form of alternate areas at the end of the game where you could see and recall all the things that you experienced, and read developer messages as well. I'm not criticizing Blank Dream for not having these things, but a little fan service is just the right kind of small attention to detail that people like myself are looking for, and it makes the player feel a bit more satisfied. I'm no Gerard, Dragon Rider, Khalil the Completionist, but I like to partake in a little bit of completionism every now and again just for the funsies. On that note, I'm done. I hope all you guys enjoyed this little video. I expect more of these for uh, other games in the future. I don't know when I'll be working on them, but uh, it was def definitely fun. 
It took a lot of fucking time to edit, too. Seriously, you would not believe the amount of time that it took to edit anything that has a bunch of clips that I have to move from here and all this other shit from the game. Anywho, take it easy, folks. And if you can leave on any sort of moral or learning experience from this video, I I'd have to leave you with this. Just take it easy and enjoy your games. No matter how small or low scale in comparison to any other game out there, just you never know what kind of experience that you're gonna get. Also, don't shit in urinals. Seriously, some guy did that in the men's bathroom at my job the other day. It was fucking gross. Be civilized, people. Goddamn.